Hey there, Mr. Olson here. Math, lots of math. We've got some simple equations in the warm up. That's because some of these simple types of equations, I found that a lot of kids uh, didn't actually do well with that um, on our quiz on inequalities. A lot of kids struggled with some of the basic steps in solving these. So, did a warm up, and in class we can talk about this. If you struggle with solving these types of simple equations, please talk to me, all right? I don't mean just looking at this and saying, well, that's got to be 3, because 3 plus 5 equals 8. I mean that you need to know how to subtract 5 from both sides, and why you subtract 5 from both sides. Because this is a plus 5, and minus 5 does the opposite of that. And those cancel out, giving you x equals 3. <clears throat> I still have way too many kids that are doing stuff that doesn't make sense on this. Um, the two things that were most frustrating with this one was I had some students that wanted to subtract 8 from each side. That would then give you x minus, let's see, so 5 minus 8, that would be negative 3, x minus 3, 8 minus 8, 0, which is not solved. We need to get rid of stuff on the same side as the x. That's always the thing. A lot of my students, just today, uh, one of my 7th graders, they're not as good at solving equations, so they kind of struggled with this, but it was a really good question. They said, I don't always know which one, what I need to get rid of, what stuff I need to subtract, what stuff I should be adding. Anything on the same side as the x is stuff to get rid of. You want to get the x by itself. The other one that I'd see a lot of is people would put plus 5, plus 5, and then they'd cross these off. No. We do not, math is not just randomly writing down numbers and crossing things off. If it feels random, talk to me about it. I will do everything I can to help you understand. Uh, but it is very logical. That's why I like math, because I'm a logical guy. That's how my brain works. I have a hard time with stuff that doesn't feel logical. I struggled with history, uh, English, and occasionally even science when I was in school. But math always came easy to me because for me, I have to see stuff very literally and logically. If we write a plus 5 here, we are adding 5. If we add 5 to that 5, that makes a total of 10. x plus 10. That 8 plus 5 is 13. The reason this minus 5 works is because 5 minus 5 is 0, leaving us with nothing else with that x. Honestly, it's sort of goofy, but uh, I heard someone uh, one time, a higher person at the school district, they said, math is just rewriting equations in slightly different ways each time. And it cracked me up because that's true. All we are doing is rewriting it slightly differently till the x is by itself. Weird, but that's what we do in math, and it's actually a very logical process if you understand it correctly. If you're not understanding it, if you're not seeing why this makes sense and this doesn't, talk to me and I will help you out. All of those, wrong. Okay, number two. And this one, the issue I had here is that people get thrown off when the unknown is on the right side of the equation. We still do the same thing, though. We've got a 7 and a 5. Which one's on the same side of the equation as the uh, w? The 5. Notice there's are two sides, so we need to get rid of that 5. It's a minus 5. I saw so many people that wanted to do a minus 5 to each side to get rid of that. No. That's a negative 5 already, because it's a minus 5. We need to do a plus 5 to get rid of it. So plus 5, 12, 12 equals w. Number 3. We need to multiply by 4 to get rid of that divided by 4 there. It's really important that you write it this way. It might not seem like it makes a difference, might not seem like it matters, but it really does. Uh, math is a language, you have to learn how to speak it. My 6th grade teacher would always say that. And sometimes it's not just speaking it. This also means multiplying by 4 on each side. It's accurate. And yes, it's weird using the x for times because x could be a variable as well. But we're used to x being times from elementary school. But don't write it this way. One, this looks like we're multiplying that 4 by 4, so it should be like a 16. Y divided by 16, which would be wrong, obviously. Um, two, this idea of writing a multiplication right next to the number. In fact, we don't even do write the multiplication there. We try a 4. That's just like what we're doing on this problem. This is how we write things in math, is that we have a 4 next to a y. We may have a dot in between, we may not. Either way, it means multiply. If you get used to writing it like this, then you understand that language better. You always learn a language best by speaking it. And you're speaking math in the best possible way by writing it, doing it this way. Doing it this way would be like if you uh, spoke English with poor grammar or um, with a weird accent or something, you know, that maybe you had... Uh, I had a friend that uh, he had a southern accent that it was impossible to understand what he was saying unless you paid very, very close attention. That's kind of what we're doing here, is that we're doing something with an accent that makes it harder to understand. 
that it still is the same language, it still means the same thing, but we're slurring our words. We're uh, speaking with marbles in our mouth. I don't know. Um, that makes it harder to understand, and so that makes it more difficult. If you're always writing it this way, then when you get to problem like number four here, where you've got these two numbers, uh, these two things next to each other, then you remember from this where you multiplied by four and wrote the four next to the y, you remember that this means multiply two, and then you less likely to get that wrong. Anyways, those cancel out, giving us y equals 24. Here, this is the most missed problem on the quiz uh, of, the simple of the simpler ones. Um, so many people want to subtract 5 or add 5. I even had someone multiply by 5, and they even got it right. It was actually kind of impressive, other than the fact that they did the totally wrong thing. Um, now, we need to divide by 5. And again, if we're always writing our multiplication next to it like that, we are far more likely to recognize this as multiplication. Makes sense. If we're using it that way, writing it that way, then when we see it written that way, we recognize it better. And it's important that we write it that way with the line underneath and divide it like that. In the same way that on this one, that's not as good. I see some people that write divide by 5, divide by 5 like that. Don't do that. If we write it this way, that helps with this one. If we're always writing our division, a number over another number like that, then when we see this, we see division, and we understand that that is division. Um, and the thing that I saw on the quiz is that people that were writing it like this, or writing it like that, had significant misunderstandings on other problems, on both that problem and on other problems. Um, of my people that were writing it this way, almost every single one of them failed one of the last two quizzes. That they just did not understand how to solve equations or inequalities properly. And that's a big concern to me. I used to not be too insistent about this, about writing it this way and that way, but now that I'm understanding that, now that I'm seeing that that really, isn't effect, that really is affecting how kids understand it, I am even more insistent on that. Um, it is the best way to write it, and it helps you, by writing it this way, it strengthens your ability to do problems like that. Writing it this way, it strengthens your ability to do problems like this. And that's nice if you're doing stuff that's always making you stronger at your subject, stronger at what you're doing. Um, yeah. I mean, it'd be like uh, if you have one way to work out that strengthens your arms, but you could be doing a workout that strengthens your arms and legs at the same time. Maybe that's a better idea to do the workout that strengthens both your arms and your legs. I don't know. Key thing is, we need to improve on this. And this division symbol, I honestly, I am fairly certain that between the years of about 2000, I think, between the years of 1999 and 2008 or so, I don't think I ever once wrote the division symbol. Do you know why? Do you know why I guess those years I haven't written that? Because in 1999, that's when I started junior high, actually 1998, but maybe at the very beginning of junior high, I might have used division occasionally and written out divided by with that little line with the two dots. Once you get into algebra, you stop using that. You almost always write it that way. Once I started writing it that way, I never wanted to write it this way again, and I'm glad that I didn't because now I see that by writing it this way each time, that helped me to understand algebra better. Um, I made it through junior high math without needing to write the division symbol at all. High school math, almost never wrote the division symbol. I don't think I did. I can't think of any subject that's in high school math where I would have written the division symbol out. Um, College math definitely didn't. You're pretty much never writing out your division like that. After you start doing algebra, you don't use the division symbol at all. And it wasn't until I started teaching math that I started writing divided by when I'd write problems for my students to do. And usually that'd be for review problems if I wanted to review like dividing a negative, negative 35 divided by negative 5. I might write that that way. But I was just as likely to have written it negative 35 over negative 5. Look at that. By writing it with the bar there, I don't even need the parentheses to tell me that's a negative and another negative. So much more convenient. Uh, a student asked me, and said, well then why do we have the division symbol if it's so useless in more advanced mathematics? My theory, and it may not be true at all, who knows, do some research if you'd like, is that because in elementary school we teach kids a plus symbol you have to put between two numbers that you're adding, and a subtraction symbol to put between two numbers you're subtracting, and a multiplication symbol. Now really, I don't see any reason why we couldn't have this be a dot. We just have like a bigger dot that we use for multiplication, and then a smaller dot for decimal points. I don't know. 
Um, just use the dot from the start. It makes sense that you'd want to have a symbol to help kids see it's just the same as these other things to have a symbol for division. 25 divided by 5. Um, but then again, exponents don't have a symbol between them. With an exponent, you write it above and to the right like that. And we get those just fine. You recognize that as an exponent. It should be the same way with uh, division. I guess we could theoretically write all exponents this way with the little caret symbol, but that would ultimately kind of be more confusing. And that's the thing is that this gets more confusing once we get used to that. Trust me, once you get used to writing your division as a fraction like that, as a number over another number, you'll never go back. Okay, sorry, rant there, but this year I have more and more noticed that the way that kids write things corresponds very strongly to how well they do on quizzes and tests. And kids that are writing it the way that I, like, the way that I do and the way that I like to see it written, and the way that books write it, and the way that assignments write it, and the way that my tests and quizzes write it, and the way that the tests and quizzes from the book write it, <sighs> kids that do it that same way understand it better. Today's objective, we can solve absolute value equations. It's going to be so much, so much fun. Absolute value is defined as the distance from a number to zero. So for instance, if we had a number line, If we had like absolute value of 3, that is 3 spaces away from 0, so it's equal to 3. On the other hand, absolute value of negative 3, that's also 3 spaces from 0, so that's equal to 3 as well. That's the tricky thing with absolute value, is that absolute value always gets rid of any negatives. If you take the absolute value of a negative number, it equals the positive version of that number. If you take the absolute value of a positive number, it still equals the positive version of that number. So 3 and negative 3 have the same absolute value of 3. Same thing with 4 and negative 4, 5 and negative 5, or 6 and negative 6. So find out what these two absolute values equal. Absolute value of 4 and absolute value of 5. Pause the video, and we're back. What did you get for absolute value of 4? Hopefully you're saying 4. Yes, very good. What did you get for absolute value of 5? Hopefully you're saying 5. Also good. Question, what other number has an absolute value of 4? Hopefully you said positive 4. Great. And what number also has an absolute value of 5? And hopefully you said negative 5. Great. Um, I keep on forgetting to... Okay. So, number 8. Absolute value of x equals 11. See if you can find both answers for x equals... And hopefully you said x is equal to 11 or negative 11. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, that's how you do that. There's two different numbers that have to be 11, 11, and negative 11. Try out this one here, where it's x being divided by 2. Pause the video. And we're back. I've had a lot of kids that have said, is x equal to 3? Nah, it's not. 3 divided by 2 does not equal 6. You can think of this like an equation, x divided by 2 equals 6. What do we do to get rid of that divided by 2? We multiply by 2. Do the opposite. So x equals 12. And negative 12. Let's look at this real quickly, check our answers. Absolute value of 11 is 11. By the way, if absolute values, write your number, write your absolute value bar so they're bigger than your number. Absolute value of negative 11 also equals 11. Here, would have absolute value of 12 divided by 2 equals 6, which that equals 6 there. Absolute value of 6 is 6. Check. And would have absolute value of negative 12 divided by 2 equals 6. Negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. Absolute value of negative 6, 6. Check. Yay. Try out number 10. See how that goes. Pause the video. And we're back. So you might have looked at this and said, oh, that must be a 4. Because if you did like x plus 3 equals 7, you might have written the equation out, subtract 3 from each side, x equals 4. And then you might have thought, well, each other one, the negative number, was also the answer. Let's try that out. Absolute value of negative 4 plus 3 
equals 7. Negative 4 plus 3, that's negative 1. Is the absolute value of negative 1 equals 7? No. That negative 4 isn't right. What the heck? Problems 8 and 9 lie to us. 8 and 9 told us that it was the same number in the negative. See if you can think what the number might be for this one. All right, pause the video and give that a shot. Think about it for, let's say, 20 seconds. If you get it before then, you can unpause the video. Or you could keep thinking for 20 more seconds, I don't know. Okay. You may have come up with the number negative 10. Some people have. Some people came up with positive 10, but it's actually negative 10. Negative 10 plus 3 equals 7. Absolute value of negative 7, 10 plus 3. So negative 10 plus 3, that would be negative 7. Absolute value of negative 7 is 7. So that works. Basically, we need to figure out something where these numbers make a negative 7. In other words, we solve the equation x plus 3 equals negative 7. Look at that equation for a second, that second one that I wrote there. x plus 3 equals negative 7. Because that is a very key and important thing here. We get, to get our two answers for an absolute value equation, we need two equations. Notice both equations have an x plus 3 in them, just like what was on the inside of the absolute value. One of the equations has a 7 the same as the other, while the other equation adds just one little thing, a negative. And that is always the first step to solving an absolute value equation, is to get rid of the absolute value bars and rewrite it as two separate equations, one positive, one negative. Try that out on problem 11. Pause the video. And we're back. Hopefully came up with the two equations, x minus 8 equals 10, and x minus 8 equals negative 10. In each equation, we actually do the exact same step. We add 8 each to each side. Negative 10 plus 8, we've got a positive and a negative, so we subtract 2. The negative is bigger, negative 2. Try out these two problems here using the same thing. Separate it to two equations, one with a positive thing for the absolute value stuff, the one for the, the non-absolute value stuff, the other with a negative. Pause, and we're back. Oop. So here we have 5 plus x equals 4. I've had a few people want to say negative 5 plus x equals negative 4 or other stuff like that. No, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not, because it's absolute value. Anyway, do not do that. Um, you only change the stuff outside of the absolute value bar to its opposite, negative 4. Okay, we can solve each of these. Subtract the 5 there, subtract the 5, x equals negative 1. Subtract the 5 here, subtract the 5 here. x equals negative 9. Number 13, this one might mess with you a little bit. One of the equations, though, is still the exact same thing, minus those absolute value bars. The other one, we keep that the same, negative 3 plus x, so we make that 6 into the negative. Either way, we add 3 to each side. I used to actually tell my kids, add 3 to all four sides, because two sides here, two sides there, it's the same thing in all of them. Anyway, 9 equals x, and here, negative 3 equals x. Try out these two here. We've got uh, more steps on the inside there, but I bet you can handle it. I believe in you. Pause the video. And we're back. So, number 14, 2x minus 5 equals 9 is our first equation. Same thing without the absolute values. Second equation, 2x minus 5 equals negative 9. So, we need to solve this, add 5, add 5, 2x, by the way, Let's actually go back to this, because I've had a lot of people that they aren't sure, what do I try to take care of first, that 2 or the 5? Always go for the stuff that's further away from the x. This 2 is right next to it, no good. That 5 is further away, because it's got a minus between, take that out. It's further away, it's straight away from the rest of the pack, and we're going to take it out. We're going to destroy that 5. It's brutal, it's just like in nature. The wolves go for the uh, deer that strays from the rest of the pack. Is there a pack of deer? Is that even a thing? I don't know. Um, divide each side by 2, divide each side by 2, x equals 7. This one, we actually add 5 to each side again, 2x equals negative 4, and then divide by 2. One common mistake that I saw students making uh, as we were going over these notes in class, I saw a lot of kids that forgot to bring in the 2 with their x. Now, we didn't do anything to get rid of that 2, so it's still a 2 in front of the x. Divide this, x equals negative 2. 
15. We need to have two separate equations. x divided by 3 minus 7 equals 3. And x divided by 3 minus 7 equals negative 3. Once again, that minus 7 is further away than that divided by 3. So we add 7 to each side. By the way, don't ever say x over 3. It's x divided by 3. If you're always saying that, then in your head you're seeing that's division far more easily, and that's awesome. x equals 30 here. This one, the same steps, same order x divided by 3 equals 4 times 3 times 3. So x equals 12. Notice that even though some of our equations had the same number, positive and negative, other equations had different positive and negatives. Other equations had two negatives or two positive. Wait, two negatives or two positives. There's a variety of different things you might come up with on absolute value equations. In fact, some absolute value equations have no solutions at all. If you solve for x, you get a number for x, but when you check that answer by substituting it back in, you don't get a correct thing. We'll look at that next time. Until then, try out number 16 and 17 here. If you have any questions on them, let me know, and I'll be happy to help you out. Good luck with this. We will have a quiz on this next time, so, you know, make sure you understand it. See you later. Bye.